You can't risk missing this one. At long last, Europe's open for business. A journey of epic football proportions. Rangers take no prisoners in a war on all fronts. In a daring adventure to equal their greatest rival's European success. The winning Scottish title, no problem, it's a skush. We'll go and see what we can do in here. An unbreakable bond formed on and off of the park. With a belief that we could take on Andy, Andy in the world with that team and do ourselves justice, and I think that was the case. They were the undisputed kings of Scotland, but would they unify the belt in the Battle of Britain? We were billing it as a Battle of Britain. I think the English players were billing it as a walkover. Well, that's a hard draw to get, but then it was the anticipation. The atmosphere at Ibrox Park for that Legion United game. I will never forget, I've never heard a noise like it in my life. Oh, a marvellous goal by McAllister! When that ball hit the back of the net, I enjoyed the moment. It was a, it was a nice strike. We never outplayed him. No point getting anybody on about that. Uh, they gives it doing. Could Walter's team take it all the way in the first ever Champions League and overcome great sides, big bribes and fraudulent Frenchies to rule Europe? And they more than matched us, really. They kicked us off the park at first half. It's an incredible goal! That mentality of never say die. One game, one more goal than them and they would be in the Champions League final. 1992, all aboard the European Express. To the people of Scotland and for the whole of the United Kingdom, we are just a month away from Labour government. Oh, Neil, how wrong you were. John Major jumped on his soapbox to defy all the polls and win the 92 general election to continue 13 years of Tory rule. We've made uh, some good progress in uh, a number of areas. Our carpets are in for a pounding as never before. Buy a vacuum cleaner and sweep off to the States. In a futile attempt at escape, the country embarked on the ill-fated new vacuum carpet cleaning frenzy in the hopeless belief of claiming a free Hoover flight. Probably to catch Bill's eye at his inauguration stateside. The American people have voted to make a new beginning. Rangers were also cleaning up but they were finding domesticity a bore, having sewn up five of the last six league campaigns and five pieces of silverware. Second time in three seasons, Richard has held a trophy. At that time, they're in the midst of the nine in a row run, and people are saying there's no competition for them up here. They were winning leagues too easily, etc., etc. I remember thinking, you know, Rangers felt all powerful, all dominant. We're not, we're not going to take any shit off anyone here. Keep them down. When they're down, just keep your foot in the neck. There's, there's no other way you can do it. I'm sure Celtic, are the, they'd have screwed it as well. They'd have been right into it. And you can't let them away with anything. Ruling over this ruthless success was gaffer Walter Smith, who'd taken over from the then Liverpool bound Graham Souness in 1991. How's that? A lot of people have asked me, you know, what was the best moment of my time in management. Probably uh, being asked to become the manager was, was the biggest thing. Fortunately for me, David Murray decided that I would be um, a replacement for game, which at the time was a big decision for him. We wish him every success from everyone involved with the club and hope that he brings us on to greater glory and future trophies, including this year's championship. Walter not only had to fill Sunis's shoes, but also his squads. The laws of the game had changed in 91, limiting the amount of foreign players to three in European matches. So it was a case of out with the old and in with the new Scottish-ish players. Got a phone call at half past three saying get yourself up here. So there was no choice to make really. I mean, you don't turn club arranger style. I'm just looking forward to starting. Like I say, if everything gets sorted out on Monday, that'll be me. We had what would have been termed, I think, roughly about 14 foreigners in our squad because we're the English or classed as foreigners, so it meant a change in emphasis from our own point of view. I think there's a part of Rangers that became very proud of this, that the, there was a Scottish fighting unit at the heart of the team that was proving very successful. By the time the league flag unfurled at Ibrox for the first day of season 92, Walter's squad had famously bonded, both on and off of the park, to become formidable opponents for any team. It's certainly the closest squad I was ever involved in. We did everything together, you know, we, we fought, we argued, we won, we, we, we lost, we you know, went into everything together and we knew that uh, you were never far away, there was always somebody at your back and that's a, that's a special feeling. Young still well forward, chest it down to Durant. 
Mikhailichenko, Durant. Oh, wonderful goal by Ian Durant. The captain of the time, Richard Goff, sort of summed up the the ethos of the era, if you like, when he said the team that drinks together wins together. Yeah, I did say that, but I, but it wasn't. Um, we weren't drinking every day, like like some people have kind of made out. Good ball through to Ali McCoyst, who's on side. McCoyst, two one to Rangers. It's, it'd be crazy to think that we were out partying all the time because that was nothing could be further from the, the truth. We wouldn't have been as anything like as, as successful and lucky to be successful as if that was the case. But you know, we all know what Richard meant. You name it, we did it, and we did it together. Of course, we had a beer at the right time. We did that together as well. It was a lot of fun. A lot of fun. So it looks like it's chips on its own salt money. We Thank bottle you. of Chianti. We drank with the fans. You know, we used to drink in Duke Street and and Paisley Road West. We, we were no different. We were lucky enough. We were. We were guys who were lucky enough to play for the club. But we went out and enjoyed it and then came and fought like, like anything for each other on a Saturday to get the result, or whether we got the result on a Saturday and then went celebrating. I don't know which came first. It used to be called the Barmy Scots Corner, but it was great, but again, these things all fall into place when, when you've got a level of success. In that time, we had that level of success, so I think the, the, the gaffer let us away maybe a wee bit more than <laughs> maybe we should have. <laughs> it's always an awkward thing for a manager because you're in an outside rather than being right in the midst of it all. But you do get a feeling for a dressing room. And we were fortunate we had maybe more than a fair share of, uh, of characters, but it certainly helped. You know, we had a, a good dressing room, a lively dressing room. Most important, a dressing room that wanted to, to go out there and win. Is there winning title after title, their confidence grows, their arrogance grows, and they believe, hold on, this is this the winning the Scottish title. No problem, it's a skush. We'll go and do, see what we can do in here. That's the way Rangers looked at that. After a night of great disappointment in Europe, Spencer worked a little magic in the wing. And his but for Rangers, on the in here Rangers was proving to be a wee bit of a problem. A few minutes later, though, Rangers were out. The ball cruelly deflected off Scott Nisbet and it squirmed through Gorham's fingers into the net. Their European endeavours up to this point were less extended stays, more like day trips when it came to the knockout European Cup. club up to £4 million in lost revenue over the season. Acura was always a, uh, a challenge, you know. It was it's one of those things I, I always look back the way, you know, and through experience realise that um, probably, you know, for ourselves, we had to be at the very top of our game if um, we were going to do anything. Yet European football, just like the squad laws, was changing. Clubs were realising the potential for making money. You had the strong nations, including England, of course, Germany, Holland, Spain, France, Italy, all of these countries saying, hold on, we need to generate more money. Um, we'll form our own uh, European league if something's not done. Some people are saying that we should have acted long before now. Rangers were at the forefront of this change. The Ibrox Club had their own inside man involved in the UEFA machinations to create a new look champions competition. Rangers were in the European Cup, but it was a knockout tournament and there was discussions at the board level. You know, ideally you'd like to play in a, a tournament with, with more games on a regular basis. So there was a proposal put forward to UEFA initially with um, there was some knockout phases and then there was group stages and then quarterfinals and semi-finals and that went down like a lead balloon. I'm not saying Campbell Ogilvie was getting ahead of himself, but he was certainly willing to explore ideas where the body politic of European football could be broken up and made into a wider whole. And I think UEFA got scared of this. We still felt there was a, that there was a model in there that would be attractive moving forward. So it took a different tack on it. Um, spoke to a few people at UEFA and changed the proposal round whereby it would be some playoff rounds then the group stages, and then straight into the final. Campbell Ogilvie's proposal was eventually adopted by UEFA president Lennart Johansson. The competition setup would see two knockout rounds before the league stage proper. The winners of these two Champions Leagues would then compete in the final. Even Campbell, I don't think, realised uh, the full implications in just how big this Champions League would become. No, we were pleased to see it. Um, up and running, 
and I certainly think that it's moved on to be the actual Champions League now, which has been a major success, uh, probably the biggest club competition in, in the world now. And so to round one of this new look Champions only Champions League. The 16th September at Ibrox saw Rangers defeat Danish title holders Lingby 2 0. Yeah, we all have the ambition to do well in Europe, and this is just the first, the first hurdle. Uh, we're halfway there in the first, in the first uh, round, but we have the second part of the job to do. Rangers increased their aggregate scoreline to 3 0 when Ian Durant resisted the temptation to square to Mark Hatley and push the ball beyond the reach of Brodersen. You know, I remember going to Lingby and, and getting that 1-0 victory and then waiting to find out who we were going to play in the next round. It was going to be Leeds, I think Stuttgart, who you know, had, were having a playoff um, to see who would meet us. Leeds United secured the right to meet Rangers in the second round of the European Cup. Anticipation was high in Gov. Two games stood between Rangers and the Champions League stage. The first leg of the tie would see the reigning English champs face their Scottish counterparts. But due to the fear of crowd trouble, there'd be no travelling support, leaving the sellout Ibrox fans expecting. What sort of game is it going to be? Tight. Tight game, but I think we should win. We have to. We have to. What makes you say that? We have to. I mean, we have to get to these stages. I mean, we proposed it to UEFA. It's embarrassing if we can't get there. There was a, a sort of casual disdain, really, for, for Rangers. And I think as, as they were coming up to that first leg at Ibrox, you know, this we, we were billing it as a battle of Britain. I think the English press were, were billing it as, as a walkover. And don't forget, of course, that we've got Ali McCoy. Scotland's beautiful countryside. The peace, the tranquility, the natural beauty of our glorious outdoors. Not quite. 1992 saw the cheesy quavers of the nation getting buzzed, boshed, and bonkers al fresco. A rave on. I'm bigger and bolder and rougher and tougher and other words sucker, there is no other. Have you seen any drug cheating? Yeah. Yeah. Hi. Hi. Did you take any yourself? Oops. It's midnight and the party's in full swing. Enough culture. Time now for sport with Paul Cooney at the start of a crucial period for Rangers. Battle of Britain. Battle of Britain. It was the Battle of Britain. Obviously it was Battle of Britain. At the start you always say, oh, that's a hard draw to get. But then it was the anticipation and, uh, you know, we started to look forward to, to that game. Scottish football at that time was being battered from pillar to post in the English press. And then and when Rangers drew Leeds... There was a lot of arrogance from my colleagues down south that uh, it was a walkover. You know, they were just turning up to get practice before they went into the sections. I'm fairly confident that in most of the predictable situations, we will be able to deal effectively with things and, and, and be in control. Last night, Leeds players had a look at the stadium, where tonight they'll try and halt the European ambitions of Rangers. With the greatest respect, the English media was never going to fancy us. England against Scotland, all the, the old enemy sort of stuff nobody's going to beat an English team. Um, so that was enough, and the incentive was there. Obviously, Leeds really fancy their chances. We're up for it big time, especially with it being Leeds United, the, the Battle of Britain, we're, we're up for it big time. The atmosphere at Ibrox Park for that Leeds United game, I'll never, I'll, I will never forget, I've never heard a noise like it in my life. It was absolutely incredible. I was looking around at Gary McAllister and Gary Speed and even Gordon Strack and I said, you know, they're now season pros and you, they, the, the volume of noise came out, I was saying it was incredible. That initial 10, 20 seconds, just as the, the ref blew to start the game, was electric. So we go into the opening skirmishes and what's been billed as the Battle of Britain. And inside 60 seconds, it's gone from mayhem to total silence. To take it into the rear post, headed away by Robertson. Oh, a marvellous goal by McAllister. Well, what an incredible start, just over a minute gone. I'm actually pointing at Gary McAllister, getting someone to try and pick him up. I've played with Scotland with him, you know what, how deadly he is from there. It never happened, they ended up going to, to Gary and he smashed it in the top corner. I had a cheek to die for it. Well, this is the worst possible start Rangers could have had. 
corner. David Robertson gets his head. To Gary McAllister comes onto it here. That's a tremendous ball of his gave Andy Gora absolutely no chance. To the rear post, turned away by Robertson. Oh, a marvellous goal by McAllister. And that ball hit the back of the net, and, and that deadly silence came over Ibrooks. Enjoyed the moment. It was a, it was a nice strike, and uh, I, I think I think Coyster was meant to be picking me up on the edge of the box. She probably been close to him. Um, and he ran by me, patting him on the back side and said, what about that for a wee strike? <laughs> I remember just feeling it ill when he put it in the top corner. So he was getting pelters from the Rangers bench for not picking me up. To go down 1-0, down after 30, 40 seconds, was about a joke to us, but now the, the old 12th man at Ibrox certainly spurred us on. Well, a double scotch there because Strachan floated the ball in from the right from the corner. And now it was Gary McAllister to send an unstoppable shot. By the time the ball was at the centre circle, there had been a, a row just started slowly erupting around Ibrox like it was a crescendo of noise that I've never heard before for a long time either. Just to say, hey, come on, the support was still with us, you know. As Cam as possible at the back, and there's a free kick. 20 minutes gone, and Hedley bundled off the ball. Again, here's McCoy, step up for a penalty kick, to me. Well, the referee waved it away. Referee... On and on, Rangers battled in a determined bid for parity. Luckily, Leeds goalkeeper John Lukic literally handed them that opportunity in the 21st minute. Right to the ball. Lukic gives himself. It's a goal for Rangers. Well, a complete miscue by the goalkeeper. Well, Rangers won, Leeds United won. The goal scorer's goal just drops at his feet into the box and then dips his shoulder, sends me on a dummy so I can't celebrate with him. What I remember most about the game is the final whistle. You know, we, we put a lot of pressure on second half, but not managed to get that third goal, which we probably deserved. Um, and it was a sense of when the final whistle went, it was oh, as if even the supports thought we hadn't done enough. You know, two one isn't ain't going to be enough against a side like Leeds down at Ellen Road. So we've got an away goal, we've lost, and I suppose the best way to lose is by one goal with an away goal in your pocket. Applause rings all around Ibrox Stadium and a terrific fight back by Rangers who went behind But it wasn't only a journey to Leeds that Rangers had to worry about. Domestic matters were paramount as only four days after their triumph at Ibrox they were playing for the Skull Cup against Willie Miller's Aberdeen at Hamden. You don't really get time to, to, to look back or look forward. You just look at the next game and that's it. You can't plan any beyond that. We always want to win the first cup the League Cup, get that out of the way, because that is the, you know, the, the first piece of the jigsaw for the treble. And the, it's the first cup you, you can keep away from Celtic or Aberdeen. For the two managers uh, leading out the teams to a tremendous lot. I think some of my family lost the plot a bit. I think they put a tenner on me to get the first goal. And surprisingly, I think it was only 16 to 1. I thought it should have been about 1,000 to 1 with my goal scoring record, but 16 to 1. And the 47th League Cup final gets underway. It was just at the stage where the, that season they brought pass back law in, and you couldn't pass it back and pick it up. I remember Big Roy Aiken was playing for Aberdeen at the time and passed it back to Thea Snelders. But because he's thinking about the rule, his chest did it, hit his chest, and it's landed to me. And I've managed to put it through his legs um, to go on the lot. Aberdeen, though, weren't going to make it any easier for Walter's men. Well, not yet, anyway. Uh, there can be a formidable partnership, but this is Shearer. Oh, a terrific goal! Duncan Shearer, 62 minutes. Fired in the cross, Hayfley's in there, and the ball's in the back of the net. Walter Smith is absolutely delighted. It's Rangers 2, Aberdeen 1. The Robertson cross comes in here. Oh, that tragedy for the Aberdeen defence. And there goes the final whistle. Rangers win the Scottish League Cup for the 18th time in the history, for the 18th time in the last With the first piece of silverware in the bag, Rangers set their sights on Leeds once more. But regardless of their 2-1 first leg victory and domestic record, Walter's men were still viewed as the underdogs. They were extremely dismissive of Rangers. You know, it was just a matter of uh, they've won the first game, but they'll lose the second game. They've got no chance of getting, it and getting through. 
So um, it obviously uh, helped, you know, fire everybody up. The waiting was over. 90 minutes to decide who would represent Britain in the inaugural Champions League. Rangers were ready. As we're coming out of the tunnel, you'll never see 11 more concentrated men on doing a job on that night. The faces of the players, so focused and, and angry and, and hungry, and the desire then in that team was something special. Battle of Britain, part two. It's just about to get underway. The referee checking with his lines and Eric Cantona there alongside Lee Chapman. The game went the way the first game went. We got scored in three or four minutes. The old BFG boot flick goal. Andy Gorham showing all of his experience there. Uh, Durant challenging for it. It breaks to Hatley. Hedley has scored a sensational goal. Two and a half minutes gone. Look, it's no chance whatsoever. Your heart sinks because then it's going to be very tough for us to to then progress. You know, the game the game was literally over. The second goal for me was probably the most enjoyable. Speed tried to knock a ball into Eric Cantona into the box. John Brown gets it, flicks it out. Passes it out to me, I flick it between my legs, I give it to Ian Durant, I run on, he gives it back to me. And I know for a fact that Alistair's not coming come to support. Hitler, the far side. And the defender went with him. I hit a, I hit a ball it's into an area where I thought Alistair would be. McCoy said, I had her. You can't write the scripts with McCoy, he, he just does it all the time. It was a textbook goal, it was a classic counter. Great cross in and a great finish by Ali. Gary Speed is racing back to provide the cover, here's Ali McCoy! Oh, he's done it! I put the header away, I ran by him, patted him in the back, he says, put that for a wee header. I <laughs> says, you're teasing it. When we got the second goal there, I thought we're 4 1 up with a matter of 10 minutes or so, 12 minutes to go, and I, I could never have imagined that. We never outplayed him. There's no point getting anybody on about that. Uh, they gives it doing, I think, in the last 10, 15 minutes. They had eight chances, they had eight attempts on goal. And it really did give us a battering. Gorham is in incredible form. Gorham was fantastic that night. Good goalkeeper, great goalkeeper. I had 50 quid on us to win 2 0. And it was 2 0 up until the last minutes, and uh, Cantona get clear. He's hit a shot, and it's actually come off Richard Goff's toe. So there are five minutes left. Here's Cantona. And Leeds United pull one back. If he hadn't come off Goff, he had saved it. But maybe he wasn't aware of my bet that I had money on Cantona to score that night. <laughs> nah, I'm teasing. I think we all got something like. 25 grand a month to get through the, the, the two games to get into the Champions League and I'm worried about a £50 bet. There goes the final whistle. Leeds United 1, Rangers 2, Rangers go into the Champions League. You know, when we get drawn against uh, like English teams and, and we do well, I think it always gives them a wee reminder that our football's not quite as bad as they would like um, to, uh, to think that it is. Rangers are into the European Champions League and the mega bucks that go with it. Rangers had done it. The group stages guaranteed six more lucrative European games and the tantalising prospect of making it through to the very first Champions League final. No one, though, could have anticipated the footballing adventure that was about to unfold. With a belief that we could take on MD, MD in the world of that team and, and do ourselves justice, and I think that was the case. We'll see you in a couple of minutes. Having booked themselves into the Champions League stage, all that was left for Rangers and their supporters was to find out who they'd face. Today's draw in Geneva kept Rangers apart from tournament favourites AC Milan, but they will have to play Bruges from Belgium, French champions Marseille and the Russian team, which put Barcelona out this week, CSKA Moscow. I think they knew then what they were up against. It. You know, They knew what the Champions League was going to be all about, that you were going to play 
basically the World Cup of club football uh, and it really was class, you know, class you were up against and you had to lift your game up a level. But with so much at stake, Rangers, and more precisely Mark Hinckley, were about to realise the lengths people would go to to ensure their team gained the upper hand. Hakley's been round the European block with AC Milan and Monaco and that experience is crucial to Rangers this season. Mark Hakley tells a story and uh, you get a phone call off a French guy talking about not him playing in Marseille, basically telling him to look after him. Mark's not that kind of guy, obviously, and he's he's told him where to go. Told him where to go, don't phone me again, lose my number and put the phone down. The way the phone call came and who it came through seemed to me like it was pretty serious but as I say you just put it to the back of your mind and you forget about it and you you just get on with the job at hand The 25th of November saw Rangers welcome the French champions to Ibrox A rude awakening lay in store A baptism of fire in their first Champions League game They had obviously said that they had to match us physically and they more than matched us physically They kicked us off the park in the first half Going in there again, and they've left a gap. And Boxit scores for Marseille. That was dreadful defending. The the conditions were just horrendous. And Elvis seemed impressed. It was one of his first games. It was his young, young kid. A great player. We had a mix up. All of them nervous, Presley. Well, a disaster for Rangers. Pretty forward. It was all my fault. And he, he looked, he nearly had tears in his eyes when Vol went round me. I just looked, I said, Come on, get on with it. You can't do anything about that. It's my fault. No tea, no tea. I must say, they were excellent. You know, for the first 70 minutes of that game, it was 2 0 for them going on, you know, 3 or 4. They missed a couple of real good opportunities and they played exceptionally well there. But again, you know, spirit and determination of our group were great. A typical Scottish trait, if you like. You know, keep going and keep keep battling. Well, still the drama continues. Durant. Elachenko's breaking in the left. That's a good ball from Durant. Wiggins through the middle. So to his head late. To claw it back against the side who would dominate a lot of the game. And, and I think they thought he was all over and done by. Quicks and a terrific throw. And big Mark Haley, you know, scores with a diving head, a typical Mark. What a fight back. We'd actually ground a result out from being nowhere dead and buried. Um, you know, that mentality of never say die. Cross comes off the defender, lands top of Mark Haley's head and he guides it into the back of the net. Astonishing turnaround in the game here. Just to go and match them and, and almost beat them. Uh, give us a lift as well. Final score here at Ivan Stadium. Rangers 2, Marseille 2. CSKA Moscow were here last night and they trained in Bochum for the first time. No, they didn't. That's shite. Rangers Champions League was certainly off and running. Game 2 in December saw the team take on CSKA Moscow at a neutral venue in Germany due to severe weather in Russia. We played them in Bochum, in Germany, and it was absolutely Baltic. The conditions were ridiculous. Inside, the Rangers' support turned Bochum into a mini Ibrox. There was an incident in the first minute. I don't know how that ball never went in, our goal. It was incredible. It was like, it was, it was like pinball. They had about six chances in ten seconds to put the ball in the back of the net, man. It was unbelievable, and they didn't get it. Having survived the early Russian onslaught, Rangers turned the tide 13 minutes on to grab a winner. Touch from Hitley. It's Ferguson. It's got him. Rangers have taken the lead. 13 minutes gone. Three points out of four going into the winter break. Time to regroup. Well, you don't get time to regroup, do you? We've got a game on Saturday again, and uh, we're away to Aberdeen next Wednesday, so whatever time we've got to regroup, um, it's very little. But uh, we've had most of that for most of the season, and we'll just have to keep getting on with it. Christmas cheer all round for the Jairs. Putting Europe on hold, they continued their dominance on the domestic front.
you know, from our own point of view, we were delighted with the way the season was going at that time, the way that it was panning out. League leaders since September, first silverware, unbeaten in 29 games in all competitions and sitting joint top with Marseille in the Champions League. I must admit that 92-93 was an exceptional season of football for us. You know, after Christmas time, we had, you know, European games to look forward to as well. March of 93, and the Champions League kicks off once again. A tough thud game would see Rangers share the points with Bruges away in Belgium. Okay, Bayer gets the touch, Michaela Chenko's in there, it's seven up! And the Vince game has scored! This is McCall. McCoy's leaves it to Hausler! Peter Hausler scores for Rangers! A vital strike for Rangers as group rivals Marseille were also being held in Moscow. Luckily, joint league leaders Marseille were also sharing the points. Fate, it seemed, was drawing Rangers and Marseille towards a climatic show. Placed the ball expertly past Bartes. But before that decider could be played, Ibrox would be the venue for the vital game four of the group. Expectations were high as Rangers prepared to face Bruges once more. On to sport now with the man the bookmakers fear. Rugby, racing or football, it's uncanny, but sports correspondent Jim Delahunt always gets it right. Maybe 2-1. I'd settle for 1-0. <laughs> You'll settle for 1-0. I think 2-1. That's played through now. Attempting to capitalise on their first goal, Rangers turned to the old BFG. Unfortunately, this one was boot, flick, gone. An innocuous challenge. Stalins grabs him around the neck to push him away. And a red card comes out. But when Hately shoved Cossey away, the Bruges man went down as if mortally wounded. He just went to challenge, and, and I felt that uh, you know the foul was, was for us, and I couldn't believe it when the referee sent him off. It wasn't really a dodgy sending off. I think he hooked the guy, you know what I mean? I think it was a good one. I think he caught him with a good one. Well, Mark said he just shrugged him off or something, but I think, he, I think it was just a bit more than a shrug. This is a huge blow to Rangers. Apart from losing Hately tonight, they will now... Lose him from the game against Marseille. A player down and things were to go from bad to worse. Here come the Belgians. Now for Stalins. Luckily, for the Ibrox tough was on hand to gift the ten men Rangers the win. Oh, off his own player, McCall, but Lisbeth's in there. And that one takes a wicked deflection. It's run in from Scott Lisbeth. It's an incredible goal. The deflected cross goes up over the goalkeeper's head. It's quite remarkable. It's Rangers 2. There was fans actually laughing more than celebrating that goal and uh, I think everyone will always remember it. Scott Nisbet, the scorer of the winning goal. Yeah, it's usually close to get to the headlines, but just chuffed his earth for my family and all that. So it was great. Having gained the maximum two points, Rangers were hoping CSKA could do them a favour against Marseille. Marseille, the French champions crushed CSKA Moscow. Frank Sauzé putting them ahead from the penalty spot. Then the roof came in on the Russians. The score came through as 6-0. We'd seen CSK Moscow in the game in Bochum and knew, knew they were a disciplined team. And it smelled. It just smelled bad. Ongamar going round the man, crossing it now towards Rudy Vola. A back heel by him. And it's him there. It's another one. And it's Frank Sose again. He allowed to go all the way. A wonderful goal by Pelle. The rumours, the whispers, the stories, and you heard it from French colleagues as well. And but nothing, it was nothing that you could actually say at that time because you didn't, you know, certainly Scottish journalists didn't have any proof. You had suspicions, but you had no concrete proof. Well, it's another one. Deep cross. And knocked in. You looked at it and you thought, well, either they were absolutely brilliant, Marseille or CSK Moscow were horrendously bad or there was something bent about the game. There was no other way. Deschamps with a shot. And it's goal number six. Desai. Dodgy result or not, Rangers tied on points with Marseille. But crucially, now trailing on goal difference, knew their destiny lay in their penultimate game in the south of France. With both teams expected to win their final games, this, in essence, was the group decider. 
Rangers had to go to Marseille and win that game. One game, one more goal than them, and they would be in the Champions League final. I think I'll just relax in my new home, and tomorrow, Provence awaits. Mmm, lovely. For Rangers, there'd be no Entente Cordiale in Marseille Stadium. Could they rally? Alele Blue. The velodrome was unbelievable. We came out, eh, out under the ground, the stairs came up, and all of a sudden they were playing on. I forget, it was Van Halen's jump. And I remember being at the velodrome when the players emerged from the tunnel, such a sweeping open stadium, packed. And, you know, that, that was one of the best atmospheres anywhere in the world where I've watched football. They support their team. That was walking into a kind of gladiatorial atmosphere, no doubt about it. This, in essence, is a European Cup semi-final. Tonight, the winner takes all. We played well. I mean, we did play well. They went one up with a tremendous strike by Franzose. And Marseille takes the lead. Franzose. Excellent bit of finisher. Andy Gorham just gets his fingertips to it. We battled back, we come in at half time, regrouped, and we had the right good go. We had a great wee spell of the game and Marseille, we had them pushed back. We went for the juggler. Oh, we did right, man. What a goal it was. So it's Trevor Stephen sending it in. It breaks out to Ian Durant. Oh, that's a wonderful goal by Ian Durant. But what a fabulous strike this is by Ian Durant. Lovely little bend on it. Gave Barthez no chance whatsoever. They're partner players. I was fortunate enough to make a great connection with them. As soon as it left my foot, I know now it was, it was hitting the back of it. The final whistle goal. Marseille 1, Rangers 1. Back inside the stadium, the Rangers fans celebrated a fifth consecutive Champions League match unbeaten and ninth without defeat in the whole tournament. They'll all be Bruges supporters in two weeks. Their two previous European games in the Champions League, they've drawn. If they draw again and we win, you know, we'll be through the final and uh, what an achievement that'll be. It really is up to uh, Rangers now. They've got to now concentrate on that game against Moscow at Ibrox, make sure they win it and hope that Bruges are motivated enough to take a point from Marseille. The last game of the Champions League. Rangers' new qualification was out of their hands. They had to win and hope. But in the end, could only draw. Yet within two minutes in the other game, their fate was sealed. Marseille were to score the goal, which in the end put Rangers out of the European Cup. Croatian Alan Boxic, scorer of the first goal in the 2-2 draw at Ibrox, again the Marseille hero. You see the disappointment in their faces, but they have nothing to be ashamed about. It's been a marvellous campaign. And the day is long. It's terrible, terrible way to go out. We'll win the league, you know, and we'll win the Scottish Cup, and then we'll go back next season again for this European Cup again. I can still remember going round the pitch, you know, after the game, and the flags and the singing, and I think it was just a thank you back from the fans. They knew the effort we'd put in. There must be an awful lot of people sorry they didn't put the ball in the net early on because they'd played magnificently. The one good thing was, thankfully, Marseille had won that game because if we hadn't beaten CSK in Moscow and Marseille had lost, that would have, that would have killed us. Well, a great European campaign. We still have yeah. a bit to do in our season. We still have a league championship to clinch and hopefully um, a Scottish Cup final. So we'll just go on from there. Thank you, Walter. Thank you. Putting the bitter experience of losing out in the Champions League behind them, Rangers rallied to clinch the league away at Airdrie a remarkable five games before the end of the season. 
a league they topped since September, regardless of their exhausting European endeavours. A few weeks after Rangers had wrapped up the league, Marseille was celebrating in the Champions League final. A final that Rangers came within touching distance of. Yet within weeks, a scandal enveloped European football. It would be proved that it was win at all costs. He, was, he literally was prepared to do anything to make sure that he lifted that trophy. Marseille president Bernard Tapie was accused and eventually pled guilty to match-fixing a French league game to save his best players for the European final. Marseille was ultimately stripped of their domestic title, but not that of the Champions League. It does leave a sharp taste in your mouth now. How far he can go, and then you feel, now you do feel cheated. And that's the sad part about it. It's now just football in it. You always thought that Tarpon did deserve it, but obviously when you read and hear the sanctions that were against him, and leaves, you know, a bit of kind of bitter taste in your mouth there. Bernard Tarpon had been up to all sorts, doing anything he could to illegal as well to win these games, and of course he ended up in jail. European shenanigans aside, Rangers were to cap this remarkable Scottish footballing year with a historic treble, their first since 1978. And they would do so both in style and in rather unique surroundings. The final action on the field, though, is at Celtic Park tomorrow, where Aberdeen stand between Rangers and the domestic treble. I say it's ironic, but you look back and you always hear the Rangers supporters saying, you know, you won the treble, but we actually won it at Parkhead, which meant, meant it, for the supporters it was all the sweeter. Um, you know, Hamden at the time, we're getting redeveloped. So we've gone to Parkhead and I managed to beat Aberdeen um, in the cup final. Chance on here for Murray. With a great shot on the opening goal for Rangers. It is clear. This is danger for Aberdeen. And a magnificent goal from Mark Hadley. The second for Rangers. The sheer delirium among these Rangers players. Nothing else matters. Personally, for me, it was a fantastic season because, you know, to, there's not many. I think there's only four or five Rangers captains who have, you know, won the treble. That's a season that will uh, always be very special to me. We enjoyed every minute of it. Probably can't remember most of it, but we enjoyed every minute of it. You could look back in games and teams and performances and you could have all the ifs and buts you like, but now we gave that our best shot. We gave it everything we had. It was always going to be impossible to eclipse what we'd done. 44 games undefeated in domestic football, 10 games undefeated in European football. That was never going to happen again. Fires in the cross, Hitley's in there, and the ball to the back of the net! Walter Smith is absolutely delighted! That season was the best season that I've had, uh, you know, managerially, but uh, it was also the most enjoyable to be involved in as well. I don't look back on that campaign with anything other than pride. Scored a goal. You put the disappointment of, uh, of the European campaign behind you and go out and show you, show, show the, the people what true champions you are. I took my heart to Celtic to, to lift the European Cup. What an achievement! Because on our run, we realised how hard it was. We would have got to the final, and I really fancy us to win it, which would have erased the European Cup one, which they keep throwing down our throats. Every competition that we went for, we won. And uh, we're unlucky now, the only one we won was the Champions League, which we all wanted. It wasn't for the want of trying. Goal away from the Champions League final. That's the way you got to look at it. Goal away from the Champions League final, and you win the treble. That's a wonderful goal by Ian Jordan. You know, that season was certainly take a bit of beating.
managing that team was a delight. You know, a lot of them were a handful, managerially, but put them on a pitch, and, uh, and they were fantastic. Some great football moments to be remembered from 1992. I hope you were watching closely as we have a fantastic prize up for grabs for one lucky viewer. We're giving you the chance to win £1,000. For your chance to win, all you have to do is answer this question. What was the final score for Rangers against Leeds United at Ibrox? Was it A, 2-1, B, 1-all or C, 1-0? Phone 0901-293-3401 or text the word PRIZE followed by ABOC plus your name and town to 83788. Calls cost a pound from BT Landlines. Calls from other networks may be higher and from mobiles will be considerably more. Text cost a pound plus one standard network rate message. Entrance must be 18 or over. Lines close at 9am on Saturday the 9th of April and the winner will be announced on stv.tv slash win by 12pm on Monday the 11th of April. Rules, terms and conditions at stv.tv slash win.